to a very special Elite Audio video and the reason it's so special is that we have got audio royalty with us today. Um, unfortunately we couldn't manage so we invited Ivana Manley on instead. And uh, welcome to Elite Audio Ivana. Thank you so much, it's great to be here. It's my first time in Scotland ever. And you know, the, the fact you've travelled such a huge distance to come and see us is hugely appreciated. I know the jet lag, we were talking about this earlier, and the fact you were you know, telling us the story of your lack of sleep on your flight over from mm. New York. Was it New York you flew from? Yeah, I was at a, another trade show, the AES show, for our professional audio stuff there. And yeah. you got one hour sleep? I got one hour sleep on the plane. I, I just watched movies and then didn't fall asleep. And here you are, bright and breezy on the Elite Audio couch. Here we are. Which we will never wash that couch again. Oh, please do. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, as you probably know, uh, we recently uh, formed a business partnership with Manly Labs and it's something we're very proud and privileged to represent here in the UK. We, um, again, to, to I don't repeat myself, but it's such an honour to have you here. Oh, thanks. And uh, I've prepared some questions that I think um, our elite audio audience would, would like to know about. So. Cool. These are no particular order, um, there's not anything uh, too demanding, I won't ask how fast a cheetah can run or anything <laughs> like that. Uh, so really, the first thing, I, I, one of the things that I'm always intrigued about people anyway is what is it that drives you as an individual? Well, well I think uh, growing up in, I grew up in Atlanta, Georgia in the south and I was very active as a kid uh, in musical programs and band and orchestra so I started playing violin when I was in fourth grade Wow! and then all the cool kids in fifth grade were in band so everyone jumped out of strings and joined band. That's interesting and sorry to interrupt but I actually learned violin from the age of six as well. Oh, so, did you? Yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> maybe we could have a jamming session later or maybe not. Maybe but, not. Probably shaking our head. <laughs> <Yeah>. that would <laughs> Mark, yeah. that was just fourth grade. Yeah, one second thought, okay? let's yeah, not bother. No. So I switched to clarinet and then um, I picked up saxophone after that and I mainly played, I played clarinets and all the saxes uh, through high school. And then in America we have this thing called marching band which doesn't exist in Europe and where you get out and you make formations and I was drum major uh, for four years in my high school so I was out there conducting the band and I became a real music geek uh, for music theory and and then went to college and studied that. In parallel with all this musical, I won't say talent, but activity perhaps, um, I also was very active with uh, drawing and painting and so I, I had these visual skills and musical skills and I think uh, manufacturing were, you know, I sometimes people are like, wow, that's a weird shape of that amplifier. And to me, it's like, well, it's a little metal sculpture that plays music, you know. So combining the musical and artistic talents for me is in being able to express them through my design work at Manly Labs. The, you're right about that, the, the, that the, the kind me. of sculpture effect or the aesthetics of your amplification. I mean, it, to me, it's one of the things that really appeals. And I do like that there isn't really anything else out there that looks like that. Yeah. Um, and I think straight away you can identify one of your pieces of equipment, whether it's on the pro audio side or on the hi-fi side, straight away you know just by the aesthetic, there's little design cues that, that really stand out, so that, that's really interesting. Thank you. Um, I suppose that another, another question is, obviously you're involved in audio and it's, it's clearly a, a passion of yours, so what kind of music, if you were relaxing on a Saturday night, what, what would you listen to? Um, sometimes I'm the world's laziest audiophile and like all through the day I'll, I'll stream uh, a great radio station out of France called FIP Radio. Okay. And they also have, they have like a rock centered station and a world music station and just general and I, I've, what music do I like? I like new music that it's like comes out from left field and it's like wow this Nigerian guitar just band, you know, whatever. It could it could be from anywhere so around the world. Surprise. So I love lis listening to the French radio station um, to be exposed to new mm -hmm. music. There's another uh, radio station I listen to online a lot called Psychedelicized Radio, and it's and that's a real passion of mine. Is that that music from the mid '60s to the late '60s? Mm -hmm. um, 
but the B sides and the deeper cuts, that's what right. I go for. Because I've been listening to the standard stuff for all of my 50 years. So yeah. for me, I like to learn new music. And listening to these radio stations, I'm exposed to. I think to it's interesting because you know, often if we are listening at home, it'll go on, we use Rune quite a lot, it'll go on to Rune Radio. Mm. And then it's, it plays tracks similar to what you've been listening to. And suddenly you hear something, oh my God, what's that? And it's something you never heard of before. And it's a great way to find new music. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I do like that kind of feeling you get taken where a piece of music takes you by surprise, literally. Mm -hmm. And before you know where you are, you've downloaded the whole album and then you're discovering connected artists as sure. well, which, which is great. So, obviously, it's you know very clear music's a big passion for you. What other passions do you have in life? Oh, I love riding motorbikes is probably my, my other big passion in my life. So have you got a favourite motorcycle? Have you got like a go-to bike thing yet? I, or a dream motorcycle? Well, I just don't have enough time to get out there and do that, you know. I need to make more time in my life for that. But I've, I've had the same Harley Davidson uh, Lowrider for, I've, I bought it in 1999. It's probably one of the most iconic of all motorcycles. Sure, it's also, you know, it barely stops and it it doesn't handle very well, but it's, 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 it sure feels good. And importantly, it sounds good, so. It's part of the fun, you know, that you're taking your life in your hands every time yeah. you go out and is that what it is? True. So, um, I'm a member of the Pasadena Motorcycle Club, which is the, the world's second oldest motorcycle club formed in 1907. Wow. So it's good to be part of the community in LA doing that. Um, I also uh, am a very slow racer, so I, I'm an amateur racer out on a track called Chuckwalla. Really? Yeah, it's out in the California so desert. What, what are you racing? Is it the same type of motorcycles? Uh, you, yeah, it's not wise to race a Harley Davidson. Yeah. No, I have yeah. a dedicated race bike for that, and it's a, a Kawasaki Ninja 250. All right. Yeah. Is it two-stroke or four-stroke? No, it's four-stroke. Four-stroke, right. Um, but they've eliminated that class, so I have to race up to the... 400 cc bikes right. with 350. Maybe a lot of power. But I'm the... very slow out there because right. at my advanced age, I sure as hell don't want to get hurt. <laughs> no, sure. So, you know, some of the guys at the track are like, hey, you gotta, you know, pick so it up is a it, little bit. It's like dirt bikes then, is that the type no, of No, 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 well, street racing. Oh, really? Right, yeah, okay, wow. Yeah, so it's pretty fun. God, yeah, it's a good community. Again, I think the the motorcycling thing is is has also become. It's quite interesting. Actually, there's, there's a lot of our clients are in motorcycles, mm. so there does seem to be some kind of correlation between music, either fast cars or fast bikes. Yeah. Um, and that kind of you know, I think it maybe it must be the way our brains are wired that we kind of is it thrill seeking maybe I'm not sure. Uh, that and appreciating good engineering yeah. on all levels, right? It's, yeah, uh, for sure. It's fun. But yeah, I have a Triumph a Thunderbird Sport, which is a triple that's a 1998 model. It's, nice. Gosh, it's like 21 years old now. Because they're actually, I know we're going off on a tangent here, but Triumph uh, as a manufacturer mm. are having a real resurgence oh, in yeah. the popularity of their bikes. They make um, some beautiful bikes. Yeah, And I've lovely. got an old Goodsy as well, so I've I got a variety. I keep hoping that I might be allowed to buy a new one at some point, <laughs> and I'm still getting this cheeky head from over there. So. Yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> anyway, um, so moving on before I get myself into more trouble. Um, so, I, I, and it, I mean, I kind of know the answer to this, but obviously you're the person that's the most closely involved. What is it about Manly Labs and what is it about what you do that makes them so special? I think uh, overall one, one thing that's really important to me is integrity. And... Sometimes we don't over elaborate on things or we don't overprice things, but to me that's like the honest approach and sure. that that comes through in the sound. So let me back up a minute. We do most of our business in the pro audio arena. So mm -hmm. we manufacture mm -hmm. microphones and equalizers and compressors and things that you use in the recording studio to make a record, right? Um, we also have specialized over the years in mastering and that's where I think the audiophile in the pro audio world come together yeah. is in the mastering studio. Mm -hmm. So for me, the reference of of what what should that amplifier sound like when I'm listening, it should sound as close as to what I heard in the mastering studio. That's where the truth is. And that's where most manufacturers don't have that direct connection that you have. So in a way it gives you I suppose an insight or even an advantage that others don't have. I think so. And um, we've been lucky to be located in near Los Angeles, so we've got tons of resources 
to be able to uh, go to any number of studios in LA and listen in a really good listening environment, mm -hmm. you know, with proper acoustics and all. Um, I've done, every time I've got to find, you know, they're like, oh, how's your reference system at home? I'm like, yeah, whatever. That room just doesn't sound that good. If I really want to do some critical listening, yeah. I'll go into, you know, one of my buddies' mastering studios yeah. and do some shootouts there. You know, that's, yeah. it's a better tool to do that. And what do you use at home as a setup? Oh, um, at home, at home, I don't really have a serious hi-fi system set up at home at this moment because my living room just sound, I tried a variety of speakers in there and it yeah. just sounded crap. So. I just took it all out of there and let the living room just be a social setting. Mm -hmm. I have a, a commercial building in Eagle Rock, Los Angeles, and I've got my old Tannoy Churchills in there. Wow. Those are a very rare model that was built by the Canadian office at the time, and I have them driven by Manly Snappers. And, Good choice. And uh, <laughs> one of those Manly Steel Heads, I'm using that. Which is probably the best phono studio I've ever heard in my entire life. Yeah, it's... it's it does it, you know. Uh, I've got a VPI HRX turntable and nice. a, a Lyra Scala or something cartridge. Well, I can't remember. Yeah, it might yep. be a Scala. And what else? But I'm, as I mentioned before, I'm a very lazy audiophile these days, admittedly. And I, I use a Sonos and just stream, stream those radio oh, stations. You get it out of it. You're gonna have some job. <laughs> <laughs> while Sonos. I'm working. Sonos, who are they? I've never heard of them. <laughs> <laughs> While I'm working, you know, and uh, again, I love having music around me in my space yeah. it, um, for serious listening for work when I need to make a decision about this capacitor or that output tube or yeah. this, what does that power supply sound like. I'm doing my serious evaluation yeah. in a proper mastering studio. Sure. And I suppose that's the best place because you can then hear the subtleties of, yeah. of each component. Absolutely. Um, obviously. Um, one of the newest uh, products from Manly Labs is the Absolute Headphone Amp. And again, you know, what, tell, tell us about it because it, I mean, I've done a lot of critical listening with it and I have to say I am absolutely blown away. I mean, it is phenomenally good. I've compared it to some of the, the competition, some that's costing more. I won't mention brand names because I think that's really fair to do so, but um, suffice to say that in some of the tests that we did, using the same headphones, the same source, that the Absolute was outperforming uh, a, a two-box uh, headphone amplifier that's picked up lots of different awards and it costs about £3,000 mm. more and I, and I have to say I prefer the Absolute for lots of different reasons. Good. So te you know, tell us about it. Yeah, okay, the Absolute headphone amplifier, the, one of the first mandates I had for that design when we were coming up with, with the uh, product idea, the initial, I'm like, we have to use our new power supply. And that, that we've trademarked as Manly Power. It's a, a module this big, uh, it's got quite a few hundred components on it, designed for us by the worldwide expert in switching power supply designs, that's Bruno Putzis. Okay. He was, he is, or was an engineer at uh, Philips of Holland and then worked at Hypex then worked at a, a high-end audio company called Grim Audio. So he knows a thing or two. Yeah, this guy, Bruno, is, is just super brilliant with power supply design and audio design. And um, we met each other at these trade shows, you know, just like, hi. And I, I knew who he was and um, how, how awesome a designer was. I'm like, could you make one of these cool fancy power supplies for us? For vacuum tubes, you know, we need 300 volts and we need a lot of amps in the heater rails. And he's like, yeah, I think I could. So we commissioned him to do this design for us. Mm -hmm. And we've implemented it successfully in a couple Pro Audio products uh, since 2014. And we've used thousands of them. And reliability is good. And that's all proven. So we're now ready to put this into the hi-fi part of mm -hmm. our sector. So that was one of the first things. Why that power supply is so awesome? All the lines are regulated. They're all um, very low impedance and very okay. quiet rails. Um, it works at 125 kilohertz, so we're not having any more 50 or 60 hertz hum in yep. any of the units anymore. That's good. 
It and also that, that can be a problem at times, you know, Oh, we fight that every day yeah. with a linear supply, mm -hmm. with the transformers just, just throwing yeah. them into the circuits, especially like with our EQs and, and yeah. photo stages where it's just dying to pick yeah. up this, this hum. So eliminating hum completely, it's, it results in much quieter unit, it measures better. And in the listening test, when I, when I take, you know, a unit with a linear supply and the same unit modified for the switching mm -hmm. supply, the switcher sounds better every yeah. time. And I describe it like the blacks are blacker, it's just snappier. Well, the noise floor is so low. Oof. I mean, it is just like it doesn't exist, yeah. which is phenomenal. I've never heard that before if I had one alpha. So that was the first mandate with that design. And, and uh, secondly, we explored a couple different circuits and some of the very simple tube circuits that you see kind of repeated a lot in the industry, the single-ended circuits. They just, they just didn't do it. There's nothing that special sounding about them. So we decided to create a full-on baby amplifier, just like a baby version of the Stingray or something. Yeah. So we're using the 6AQ5 tubes, not the 6BQ, um, 6AQ5s, and those are electrically similar to a 6V6. Okay. And we've got them, uh, they're driving output transformers, which I'll get to in a sec, and we're doing that cool circuit trick that we've done in a couple of our products, the ability to switch the output tube topology from single-ended to push-pull. That's crazy, mm -hmm. and um, it means that we have to have very special output transformers to be able to accommodate both modes and accommodate everything. And was that something you felt was essential to have? Well, in it? we were so fortunate because we we wind our transformers in house yeah. and we design them in house. So, the developing a totally new, fantastic part that that will accommodate all these different operating modes and do everything really well and measure very well under any of these conditions. We, I think the guys went through about 20 something, 23 prototypes to wow. develop these alpha transformers, but they came out amazing. And, and you know, you think people watching this might not realize the amount of time that actually takes to develop something like that. Can bigger. you imagine doing it with somebody not in the room next door? Yeah. Like if we had to deal with an outside vendor that would have taken years yeah. to do, because it, yeah. it could have been maybe six weeks between and a lot of prototype. companies, that's what they have. You know, they don't have the ability to do that in-house. Yeah. And that gives you a massive advantage. And again, one of the reasons why this headphone amplifier is so special, I think, is because you have the ability to do all of that process in-house. That's which correct. Which gives you such an advantage. It's neat. And the metal work is even done like within our office park. You know, and the, the metal is very demanding on that design. You know what, it's stunning. I mean, aesthetically, it's what's not to like about it. But it's, ultimately, when you listen to it, it, it actually does take you away somewhere else. <laughs> it's the only way I can describe it. When I listen to your headphone amplifier, it's, it's spectacular. It came out great. Well, it's a, it's a, a little more complicated circuit at, than you'd find in a normal, in a lot of other units. We also did a relay volume control system, which is relay switching resistors yeah. is going to be 100% accurate all the time, mm -hmm. and uh, that that all works really well. And again, that's kind of when the first time you use it, kind of takes you by surprise. You don't expect to have something as as robust and as mm -hmm. good as that in in that type of design. So again, it was it's, it's all impressive. Uh, thank you. And I have to I'm going to switch on to something that's more on a personal level for me now. Mm -hmm. And I know we chatted about this earlier. Um, my first ever encounter with Manly Labs as an audiophile was a Stingray amplifier. Right. So naturally I'm very curious about the development progress of the Stingray. Is there a new one in the pipeline at some point? Are you thinking about a new Stingray? Uh, yeah, well the Stingray, let's see, I worked on that. That was the first product I did after David Manley left the company. And that was a bit about, you know, me coming up with like, I can kick ass and do a really <laughs> awesome thing. like. Uh, what, you, what do you call it? Um, revenge through success. <laughs> so I was really motivated to create a, a well, real you did, Well, I tell you what, that motivation you directed in the right place <laughs> because right. the outcome was really great. It was fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. And, and one of the important things about that design was, was uh, getting the, the balls and the bass out of the EL84. Yeah. And that's not easy to do. Well, it was a new transformer, output mm -hmm. transformer, that did that. So. I remember working on that with my guys and 
It's like, wh why, why isn't the old transformer, why is it so anemic sounding? And we, we would measure it. Okay, let's look at the inductance here. That's, we'll probably get some more bass if we can get the inductance up. And we calculated and did another design and measured it. Oh yeah, that's better. Look at that. And then we, you know, listened to it on a big AB switch. It's like, eh, it's kind of boring sounding, you know, even though it measured better. Yeah. So we went back and did another prototype and let the bass just saturate just a little earlier, mm -hmm. just a touch. So empirically, you know what, it didn't measure quite as good, but no, let's and listen it's funny to it you, anyway. You're talking about measurements. Because I, I know a lot of the magazines that we submit products to are really almost obsessed about measurement. And yet, I always remember Noel Keywood, who's the editor of Hi-Fi World, told me that, in his opinion, you can have something that measures perfectly, but sounds terrible. Yeah. And that kind of, what your experience of that kind of highlights the it effect. Was, it doesn't yeah. have to measure perfectly. It was it sterile. Like, it yeah. was boring. Yeah. Even though it empirically measured better. So we just, we made a slight adjustment and allowed the base to saturate a little earlier and we we built them up measured it we could see that and then we when we listened to it that's when it's like my foot was tapping and i got the goosebumps and it's that stuff you cannot measure no and it just sounded fuller because with that design i wanted it's a small amplifier it's only 40 watts but i wanted it to sound like a big amplifier yeah. so just letting the the bass bloom and beef, beef up a little bit mm -hmm. that way we could control that sound with the output transformer design. That's what I'm saying there. Well, the thing is, it left such a lasting impression with me, mm, that amplifier. Thanks. And it's one, there, there's certain components throughout my life that I, you know, when I remember about certain things mm. that really stand out. And that I love the aesthetic, which, you know, being a bit shallow was one of the things that attracted to me in the first <laughs> place. But what really surprised me when I actually heard it, and it had everything that I wanted in an amplifier. So Thank you. if you have a new one coming, is that, is that well, something in the near future? Or? Okay, well the e evolution from the old skinny Stingray that you had, version yeah. 1 and version 1.5 as we call it, uh, went into Stingray 2. We put it in a bigger chassis and uh, put a lot of features in it. The subwoofer output, the tape output, the, the uh, remote control and the lights and all that stuff. Yeah. And we, we went a little crazy with it. <laughs> um, but sonically, the the good um, upgrade on that was we were able to fit in the bigger B plus capacitors, and then that even punched out the bass even more. It was it's really pretty tight bass for a small amp, but the the bigger caps were, were important there. I think at this moment the next thing we're going to do with that design will be to strip out all the preamplifier stuff out okay. of it and just make a power amp, okay. a two channel power amp. Interesting. So that's, uh, we'll try to get that out next year. That'll be good. Yeah. Well, I'll have my name down for one of them okay. when that happens. Okay, will do. Um, and that can lead to the next question is, what, tell us about the future for Manly Hi-Fi and that side of the business. Where do you see it going? Well, back to that power supply I was telling you about, that's what we're going to work in next. Okay. To replace all the power supplies of, you know, a phono stage, line stage, and a combo preamplifier. That's... We've got some products we're working on, and uh, we'll get those finished up. But the power supply upgrade, that's a big one. Also, the relay switching and yeah. some of the techniques that we uh, have perfected in the Absolute Headphone Amplifier, we'll be renewing those and putting those into new designs, kind of uh, bringing a little more modern feature set into uh, new designs. Okay. Well, the stuff sounds great already, so if it's going to sound even better than it does now, then I can't even imagine how that could be possible. The power supply is a good, it's, it's noticeable, you, you hear it immediately. Yeah, yeah it's amazing. So I, I'm, this is part of educating everybody, like don't be so afraid of switching power supplies. Yeah, be afraid of them if they're, you know, just off the shelf, whatever. But my power supplies were designed for us purposely mm -hmm. for audio, for best audio performance for lowest noise by a true world expert on this so we've got the advantage over so many people that's a great position yeah. to put yourself into thank you and um, and the last question i guess and obviously for us as a business it would be good to know what what was it about elite audio that made you want to partner with us 
Well, uh, you guys uh, called us, so that's a good thing. You know, you <laughs> got in touch with us. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we all reached out to us. But uh, you, your visual presence, you know, on the internet and in outreach and content creation, like we're doing right now, I think is uh, you're leading the way. From Thank you. I don't know that we have another export agent around the world that's doing so much work, uh, reaching out to people like that. And it's a reason why you're successful and doing such a good job. But you all seem like nice chaps and we love dealing with you. Well, likewise. <laughs> I mean, we're fortunate as a business. We've got a great team of people yeah. that work with us. I mean, Definitely. you've met everybody today. And um, I think the thing that always makes me feel quite humble about our business is this, the dedication of people like Grant and Rachel and Martin and Barry, who they will literally put their heart and soul into everything that we do. And they actually really, you know, and, and I'm seeing this kind of feeling slightly emotional but you know the team that we have are absolutely phenomenal and I'm proud to, to work with these people and they really do epitomize what I call the ultimate professionals yeah and but they're, they're, they're they just take on the ethos that the customer always comes first sure and I think that's one of the reasons why we do so well is we, we really it's a mantra that, that we, we subscribe to each and yeah every day. but you guys are a professional operation this is not this is not like a garage hobby for some rich guy, you know, and you see a lot of that sure. out in the wild. You guys are a proper business uh, doing this, motivated by the right things from your heart. Are all all our common love for music and everything, but That's yeah, you guys are doing it the right way. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Listen, what a privilege and a pleasure to have Ivana Manley here today. I, I've got to say, <laughs> you know, I've actually goosebumps many times during this conversation just Thank chatting you. about things that you know passions that, that that somebody clearly has but for, for what they do and that's a rare commodity. You know, I've met lots of different manufacturers over the years, but you don't always meet someone that has the drive and passion and really genuinely cares about what they produce to that sort of level. So I have to say, absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you for so much for coming Mark. in today and Cheers. I'm looking forward to our curry later tonight. I'm sure that's gonna be good. Excellent. I came I came to the UK for a curry. So, well, there you go. That was the reason for coming. Hot curry later in St Andrews. I hope it lives up to the billing. Hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Um, if you haven't already subscribed to our newsletter, please do so because we have so many uh, special announcements that are exclusive to newsletter subscribers. Please subscribe also to our YouTube channel where you get to see amazing people like Ivana Manley uh, sharing the Elite Audio Couch which we've had various plans for this actually, you might want to do one. One we planned to do was we were going to take up a mountainside when it was snowy and then come straight down it. But I just thought <laughs> you could tote behind a motorcycle. And we, we could all sit in with some of your motorcycle protection gear. Um, we can maybe do it, what do you think? Grant's that? No, Grant's the same. No. Would insurance not cover us? For, no, no, I don't know. Anyway, thank you very much for watching today. It's a pleasure to have you tune in as always and we look forward to seeing you again very soon. Thank you. Mm -hmm.